With the return of Captain Rex, Commander Wolf, and Commander Gregor, all veteran clone troopers who were cloned on Kamino and who fought with the Grand Army of the Republic during the Clone Wars, we saw that there were clone troopers who were able to survive many years after the Clone Wars, despite their accelerated aging modifications. But was the roughly 15 years in which clone troopers Rex, Wolf, and Gregor the longest that any clone trooper survived? And if not, who was the last surviving clone trooper, and how long did they survive? In this video expose, I will describe who the last surviving clone trooper was, and explain how this clone trooper, one who was cloned on Kamino, and fought for the Grand Army of the Republic in the Clone Wars, was able to survive more than 50 years after the end of the war. With the accelerated aging modifications that were implemented by the Kaminoans in the cloning of the clone troopers that fought in the Clone Wars, one may think that it was impossible for any clone trooper to survive for another 50 years following the Clone Wars, thereby living during the events that were depicted in The Force Awakens. So who was the last surviving clone trooper, and how were they able to survive for half a century after the Clone Wars? The last surviving clone trooper was CT-6116, also known as Kix, who served as a medic in the famed 501st Legion during the Clone Wars. Having fought alongside Jedi Masters Anakin Skywalker, Tip Lee, and Tiplar during the Ringo Vinda campaign to remove the Separatist forces that controlled the space station present there, Kix was the medic who initially examined the clone trooper CT-5385, or Tup, who was thought to have become violently ill after he killed Jedi Master Tiplar during the massive Republic assault on the Separatist space station. Although Kix could not determine why it was that Tup had so unexpectedly turned upon and murdered the Jedi Master, and could only recommend that Tup be sent to Kamino for a more full and thorough examination, it was clear that the reason why Tup killed Tiplar was due to the fact that the biochip that had been implanted in his head, and within all clone troopers early in the cloning process, had malfunctioned, causing Tup to execute Order 66 prematurely. Following the Ringo Vinda campaign, wherein Kix and the other members of the 501st were sent back to Coruscant, Kix was confronted by Clone Trooper Fives inside a cantina that catered to off-duty clone troopers. Fives explained to Kix that he uncovered a sinister conspiracy that went all the way to the top, and that he needed Kix to set up a rendezvous between himself, Captain Rex, and General Skywalker, which Kix did. This meeting with Fives provided Kix with his first introduction to the idea that there may be a conspiracy connected to the murder of Jedi Master Tiplar by Tup. After Fives was fatally shot during his attempt to inform Rex and Skywalker of the conspiracy, whereby the clone troopers would turn upon and kill their Jedi generals, and when a virus was explained as the official cause of Tup's murder of Tiplar, Kix began to question the events surrounding the murder and started to perform his own independent investigations into the circumstances. Eventually, Kix was able to discover the conspiracy that Fives had uncovered for himself. Kix learned that the biochips that were implanted within the head of every clone trooper from Kamino were capable of delivering an order directly from Chancellor Palpatine for the clone troopers to betray and murder their Jedi generals. However, unfortunately for Kix, his investigations into the matter had caught the attention of Count Dooku. When Dooku realized that Kix was uncovering the true intent of the biochips, he ordered the Separatist forces to kidnap Kix so as to prevent him from informing the Jedi of what he had discovered. Kix was successfully captured by the Separatists and was subsequently interrogated and tortured to determine whether or not he had shared the information he discovered with anyone else in the Republic. Although Kix was adamant that he was the only one that knew of the conspiracy, the Separatists could not be sure that he wasn't deceiving them, and so planned to deliver him to Count Dooku himself on Sereno aboard a Separatist cruiser. In order to get Kix to Sereno, the Separatists decided to place him under cryocycle stasis, a process that preserved life forms through cooling to sub-zero temperatures, and placed him within a cryocycle stasis pod where he was to remain for the entirety of the trip. However, as the Separatist cruiser was about to begin its journey to Sereno, it was ambushed by the Republic, as they had discovered that Kix was kidnapped by the Separatists. With no time to raise its shields as a result of the ambush, the Separatist cruiser took substantial damage. Determining that the cruiser would not succeed in making its way to Sereno, a B-1-class battle droid, B-1-CC-14, 
who was under strict orders to prevent kicks from being recovered by the Republic at any and all costs, and who saw no other options available, decided to jump the cruiser through hyperspace at random. By jumping to a random sector within the galaxy, the droid ensured that the Republic would never locate the cruiser. Although Count Dooku would never be able to interrogate or investigate Kix personally, the decision to randomly jump the cruiser into hyperspace adequately prevented Kix from ever informing the Jedi about the conspiracy that existed with the biochips, and ultimately, the Sith were able to execute Order 66 before the Jedi discovered the true intent of the biochips. Eventually, the cruiser containing Kix crash-landed on Ponma, a desert planet located in the Outer Rim, virtually on the edge of Republic space. Due to the cruiser's loss of power resulting from the violent crash, Kix lay upon the surface of Ponma and preserved in cryocycle stasis within the Separatist cruiser, undisturbed for 50 years. And this is how Kix was able to survive for half a century following the Clone Wars to become the last surviving clone trooper. Ultimately, 50 years after Kix crash-landed on Ponma in the Separatist cruiser, a group of pirates led by the Delphidian Sidon Ithano, residing in a canteen on the desert planet, located the crash cruiser after they successfully decoded an old Clone Wars era transmission from B1-CC14, the battle droid aboard the Separatist cruiser, wherein the droid was transmitting a distress signal. The crew of pirates were drawn to the cruiser due to the fact that the distress signal mentioned that there was important cargo on board the cruiser that belonged to Count Dooku. Therefore, the pirates set out for the cruiser under the assumption that they would come across a valuable collection of kyber crystals. Once aboard the cruiser, the pirates located the ship's vault and hoped to claim the treasure that they assumed was present. However, instead of finding kyber crystals, the pirates found a single cryocycle stasis pod, and after opening it, were shocked to find an awoken Kix. Upon emerging from the pod, and with no understanding of how long he'd been frozen, Kix began frantically informing the pirates about the conspiracy that he uncovered regarding the biochips that were implanted in the heads of the clone troopers, so as to force them to murder their Jedi generals. Kix then hysterically demanded that he be transported to the Republic so that he could warn General Skywalker, his former leader in the 501st, and thereby prevent the annihilation of the Jedi. Following these demands, Kix fell into a state of unconsciousness. After a sudden surge of power released a group of super battle droids to confront and eliminate the pirate intruders, the pirates were able to escape from the Separatist cruiser, in addition to an unconscious Kix who they took with them. However, in order for the crew and Kix to escape successfully, the crew's leader Ithano seemingly had to sacrifice himself to ensure his crew and Kix made it off the doomed cruiser as it fell apart. Weeks later, Kix learned what had ultimately happened over the past 50 years of galactic history. Having realized that he was not able to get the information that he uncovered 50 years earlier to the Jedi, and thereby failed to save the Jedi and the Republic from their devastating fate, Kix remained in a deep shock. However, with the sudden and surprising return of Ithano, the pirate leader handed Kix the memory core from the Separatist cruiser, which contained a map that showed the location of every secret factory that was ever built by the Separatists. Ultimately, Kix accepted the offer to join Ithano's crew to search the galaxy to discover new potential treasures together, thereby providing the clone trooper with a new purpose and mission. So there it is! How CT-6116, or Kix, was able to become the last surviving clone trooper and survive 50 years after the end of the Clone Wars. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions? Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. If not for me... For if they uncovered it, why couldn't they?